YouTube. Got this uh, Gibson SG in, which I have fitted a Floyd Rose FRX to. Um, yeah, so I'm going to put on the GoPro on my head and show a bit more because that's quite a that's quite a piece of engineering. I uh, just thought to show you the guitar. This is a 2016 model mini humbuckers. Um, that's a really nice guitar. Rockin', see you down, see you from the, the GoPro on my head. Right, so here it is in close up. I'll try and zoom in a little bit. I've got this on my head, but I'm aware that if I carry it, I always touch the microphone, so when it's on my head, it doesn't seem to. So here's the FRX system. Um, it's got like a few things that are dead hard to explain what it does, but basically, you've got your downturn. Obviously, it's using this as its main spring, the tensioner bolt on the end there. But the up, on the up one, it's hard to explain. It kind of runs off a different spring, or it uses the spring in the opposite direction. So it actually returns to pitch, going up the way. And if you let go of it, it flicks back into the centre. It's quite mental. Um, it's done with this wee bolt here. Um, it's like an extra piece. There's a video on how to install this by Floyd Rose himself, and he just kind of quite funny the way he's worded it. So I yeah, you just kind of do this, and you just look at the tuner and you adjust it, da -da, and you'll not get it first time. And basically, what he means is you just have to sit and sort of feel it <laughs> until, you, until you get it so it clicks up and clicks down. Um, but yeah, so it just bolts into, you know, you take out your stop tailpiece. That's where it goes in the in the packet. It came with two sets of um, two sets of the studs for this because there's oh, there's different. Um, these two don't match. This is the one I took out. So one of them must be Gibson, and one of them, you know, like Imperial ones, metric. I think the threads, even though they look sort of the same. Um, so it's just held up with these two. The 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 posts from the tunematic are just in below there. You just you don't touch them. Um, it sits on top of these two wee screws, bolts on here, here and here, and it sits on top of these two wee screws, and you get like a wee plastic, a wee rubber foot thing to go under there. On this particular guitar, you can see it's it's actually sitting on top of the scratch plate, which which should be fine. Um, I hope I didn't just, did I, did I just turn this off? I'm really annoyed if I did. I've opened up another page like a madman. No, it's still recording. Oh, there you go. Yep. Um, there was also another thing. Hold on, see if I can get the thing to do this. I can see it. So I'll talk about it. Here. Where's the, hold on, where's the, where's the camera? Am I looking at it? Here, there's a wee thumb wheel. And that, uh, see if you raise that up. Uh, this way. You can raise it up to touch the bottom of the bridge, which stops it. It means it won't go up. Uh, it won't, um, raise up in pitch. But I've got this set to the other way. Um, so, it, so it returns. You might see it there. It springs to return and it springs to return. The up one is something to do with this speed ball. Yeah, so I shall play a bit. Oh, I should also talk about the the headstock thing. Um, this is really pretty simple. Uh, all I had to do, I had to drill two holes, one there and one there. The old trust rod, uh, Gibson trust rod doesn't, it doesn't quite cover it. I mean, I'm sure they're thinking of a way around it. I can't pick it up. <laughs> kind of get picked up. Anyway, so the original just, uh, Gibson trust rod covered it, uh, doesn't quite cover this, but as you notice in the middle, there's actually a, an, another trust rod cover built in. So you can take that out and adjust the trust rod without having to take off all this, what a great, so re really well thought out. These are at a funny angle as well, something to do with strength. So the existing nut stays in and you put in, you basically only have to drill two holes, bang, and it fitted on really well, like it was totally designed for this guitar. Um, yeah, so I'll see you playing it in a minute. Hey, so I'll try not to repeat myself. Here's the guitar, as I said, up and running with the Floyd Rose thing and the return to pitch thing, which is, so it kind of clicks, clicks back in and down the way. What the rat pedal? That was the governor. Let's make one some drums. Do some, do some flying.
Yeah, no, so it's working really, really well. The thing I kind of go on some trains when you do like your Chuck Berry or that, you know, that kind of thing, the bridge bends up, pulls up the way. <laughs> Which means that these these uh, notes are no longer in tune. Whereas I think that's what this return to pitch thing's kind of for. Double stops are called. But I mean, I assume this is actually a proper SG kit because it fitted really easily. Um, I wouldn't go about fitting it if you're looking to fit one of these fitting it yourself if you don't know how a normal Floyd Rose works if you can't if you can you kind of want to be able to set up a normal Floyd Rose first you know I'm sure you I think you can probably have in fact I'm totally sure you could pick up a guitar brand new with a normal style Floyd Rose on it like the whole thing or not not, not a real Floyd Rose but uh, for less than just this bridge I'm pretty sure <laughs> you know if you're looking at um I don't know Jackson's and Squires and stuff, um, I'm pretty sure the cheapest one that's got a, a Floyd Rose is the whole guitar's cheaper than just this and then you can mess about with that, learn how to set it up and then this is a similar sort, the principles are kind of the same but it's, it's very well thought out, it's kind of almost arty it's um, but it's kind of got, it's kind of, it's kind of sort of, definitely got a bear trappy look about it um, but I don't think it's dangerous um, no, so I'm very impressed. I do actually have a guitar. And it's like, to be honest, if I was to choose, I remember when it was at the 70s tribute guitars. I don't think this is one. I don't think it's not. Because they've got 24 frets. Um, there was like a P90 one, a mini humbucker one, and a humbucker one. And I was thinking, you know, an SG humbuckers first. I've got my humbucker one. The next one I would choose would be the, the a P90 one. And then I would just have to have three because I do really like the, the mini humbuckers as well. <laughs> I don't think they always work on every guitar, but they work on this one. It's pure mad the way it returns, um, but it's like a, as a proper, which you can't really ignore if you've got a big spear or if you've got, uh, it was, it was this chap here had a, one of his previous guitars with an Epiphone, it had the Dusenberg, not, not an entirely dis dissimilar concept to this, but it was more like a big spear you were sticking on and it, it attached to the, you know, without damaging the guitar, you could put it into the stop tail on the tunematic holes. But that was like a Bixby, and Bixby's are a bit shit. You know, it worked, but it was it didn't have it didn't have this return to pitchiness about it. And also this, you know, a Bixby at maximum whack goes. That's what a Bixby does. You know, it it, it doesn't go. Or maybe it does do that, but only does it once. For the, for the end of the show when you're definitely not doing an encore. <laughs> but what I mean, it's great is that I can just play this just totally as an SG and then at the end, and go, oh, we will, we we bubble, we fancy a we bubble without having to alter anything else. We've totally not, definitely not dis deteriorated the guitar in any way. We just got the extra thing. We're using the metal master pedal, um, not metal master. What's it called? The metal zone, which I don't think that video's not been out yet, but I ended up quite liking it. It's, 
Maria Street, it just doesn't seem right for it. Especially not with many humbuckers, but there we go. for this guitar, this guitar wants to rap pedal, yeah. Yeah, so I haven't, I've intentionally not looked up how much these cost, but I'd imagine it's got to be about 300 quid or something, um, and it works really well. I'd say, I, has it, got the, it doesn't have the range of a full-on, like, you know, a full-on Floyd, I don't think it, it doesn't drop quite as low. And also, if you don't like the way that the way this one's set up, see how it's, I've got it, so it's got that spring return thing, that you can just take that out, so it just you can get it set up completely floating. You know, it's got like three options in order of difficulty of setting up. It's really easy to set it up, so it's sitting here, I showed you that thumb wheel where it raises up and stops it dropping. That's dead easy to set up, anyone can put that on, which means it only does down bends and it will always return to pitch. The second one is to set it floating like a normal Floyd Rose, um, like fully floating. And then the third way, the hardest way, is you add this extra wee ball thing in to get that spring return, which I really like. Um, normally on a void, you just kind of have to, you're not 100% sure whether it's gone right back, whereas this one, it just, it stopped dead at horizontal in both directions. So you lift it up, let go of it, it just goes, and you do it the other way around, it just goes, again. And these strings haven't been, even been stretched in, and it's still in tune more than an SG would be if, after playing it for that amount of time. Rock on! And your guitar's ready, Chrissy. 